Hello everyone, it's me Dr. Muhammad Shweb and today I will discuss a different and a general topic that is arrows in chemistry. There are around 17 different types of arrows which are used differently. There is an old adage that is a picture speaks a thousand words. Chemical equations and reactions make use of arrows for their representation, thus avoiding a married array of words and sentences. Thus arrows form an integral part in the expressions of chemistry. The first chemical equation to be diagrammed was by Jean Beguin in 1615. He made the first ever chemical equation a rudimentary reaction diagram. This famous diagram found in his book Triocinium Chemicum, that is Beginner's Chemistry, detail in the reaction of corrosive sublimate HgCl2 with sulfide of antimony, that is antimony sulfide as shown here. The first one is reaction arrow, chemical reaction arrow. It is one straight arrow pointing from reactants to the products and byproducts, sometimes along with side products. It is most widely used arrow. The single arrow emphasizes one direction of chemical change. Many a times the reaction conditions, reagents and catalysts used in the chemical reactions are written on the chemical reaction arrow. Next is equilibrium arrow. The equilibrium arrows were introduced by J. H. Van Hoff in the year 1884. The equilibrium arrows are used to depict a reversible reaction. Wanthoff used full-headed arrows pointing in opposite direction to symbolize equilibrium. But in 1902, H. Marshall introduced a modified symbol with half-headed arrows pointing in opposite directions which are commonly used today. As here, these are half-headed arrows used to show or represent the dynamic equilibrium arrows. Half-headed arrow pointing in opposite direction are used to represent dynamic equilibrium when these arrows are of equal length and these represent a balanced chemical equation in a dynamic equilibrium state. Here is the modification in it that is the equilibrium favoring reactant arrows. The equilibrium is shown by half headed double arrows, but the one pointing towards the product is shorter as shown in here. The short arrows implies that the flow of reactants to product is relatively difficult and hence equilibrium is reached when there are more reactants than the products. Then the equilibrium arrow favoring the products. In this case, the backward reaction that is the conversion of product back to the reactant is rather difficult as shown by this short arrow and hence equilibrium is reached when there are more products than the reactants as shown here. Upward arrow. Upward arrow in a chemical equation indicates the evolution of gas. It appears only on the product side and is written next to the gaseous product as is here oxygen is a gas so this upward arrow demonstrate the evolution of a gas then there is a downward arrow and the formation of a precipitate during the reaction is indicated by an arrow pointing downward here are the solid precipitates and this downward arrow shows the formation of precipitates it is also shown at the product side. Then there is less commonly used retrosynthetic arrow. Here are two straight lines and a single head constitutes the retrosynthetic arrow. 
One of the widely used tool in synthetic organic chemistry is the retrosynthetic arrow. Literally mean that this is the product. Here it is the retrosynthetic arrow. This arrow shows that this product is made from these two reactants. The retrosynthetic strategy was formalized by E. J. Corey. Then here are clockwise and anti-clockwise arrows. These arrows are used in assigning the stereo descriptors R or actors that is clockwise or S sinister anti-clockwise for confirming the absolute stereochemistry of an optical active molecule. The tail of these arrows begin from the group with the highest priority and travel progressively through the groups with descending priority and the head points back to the group with highest priority. It is S anticlockwise. It is for R in enantiomer that is clockwise. Then there is a reflex arrow. Reflex is a technique used in chemistry to apply energy to reaction over an extended period of time. It involves boiling of a liquid in a vessel attached to a condenser so that vapors continuously condense for the boiling. Many times organic chemists prefer to show this reflex by using two full headed arrow, one pointing upward and the other pointing downward. In equation it is uh, written along with the solvent which is being reflexed, here it is shown. Then there is a wavy arrow. The energy transfer or emission can be represented by using the wavy arrow. Mostly it is used in photochemistry. Here a molecule or electron comes from excited to the ground state with the emission of radiations. These radiations are shown by the, this wavy arrow. Uh, a molecule is in higher sing singular state when it comes down to the lowest singular state then the energy release is shown by this wavy arrow. It is uh, in general we can say that it is uh, used for showing the light usually radiations. Then there is a rearrangement arrow. Yeah. These are the reactions in which one atom or a group of atom is shifted from one side to another. It can be in one molecule or in two different molecules that is intermolecular or intramolecular. The rearrangement is shown by a special arrow that, that is a rearrangement arrow. This arrow has a small knot present midway between its tail and head which implies that the rearrangement has occurred during the reaction. The first ever rearrangement reaction to be reported was benzyl benzylic acid rearrangement. Here it is a rearrangement arrow and here these, this arrow or these two arrows shows the reflex. Then there are electron arrows. Curved or curly arrows. The most important and widely used arrows are the electron arrows and it was introduced by Sir Robert Robinson in 1922. It is used to write the action mechanism, reaction mechanism in fact, by indicating the movement of electrons. The tail of a curly arrow starts at the mobile electrons and its head points to the destination of electron pairs. It is also shown by when an electron pair attacks from a nucleophile to electrophilic site. It shows the movement or a shifting or attack of an electron pair. Then there is a fish hook arrow. Fish hook arrow indicates cleavage or movement of a single electron. This arrow shows the movement of a single electron. Here it shows that this bond is homolytically cleaved 
and uh, one electron goes to this atom and other one to the other then there is resonance arrow a resonance is one straight double headed arrow pointing between two equivalent structures of the same molecule here are the two resonance form of benzene and here is the resonance arrow it is a carboxylate and two resonance forms are shown by resonance arrow then there is mid head arrow it represents the inductive effect or bond polarization in a molecule the inductive effect arrow is a special type of arrow in which the bond between two atoms acts as a straight line of the arrow here it shows that the electron density is shifted from methyl to the chlorine chlorine being highly electronegative attracts electron so the arrow shows the movement of electron here the arrow which is mid head arrow shows the inductive effect from electron donating to electron withdrawing or we hear from electron withdrawing group attracts electron density from the carbon or electron donating groups sometimes there are two heads in a mid head arrow it shows that here the pull is greater than this single headed inductive effect arrow then there is dipole moment arrow this arrow is used to indicate the direction of resultant dipole moment in a molecule it is represented by a single straight arrow with the head pointing towards the direction of a net dipole a special feature of this arrow is that the tail of the arrow is a positive sign usually the dipole moment vector here it is a vector uh, pointing the more electronegative atom in a molecule and the positive sign is placed at the electron deficient are positive or partial positive or less electronegative element then there are arrows which shows the electrons occupying in an orbital electrons occupying in an orbital are routinely shown with the help of arrows these arrows may be half headed arrows which are commonly used or sometimes these are the full headed arrows are also used the direction of arrows head symbolizes the spin of electron then there is dashed reaction arrow here is the dashed reaction arrow it shows that there are number of theoretical steps or uh, there are number of steps or chemical reaction which converts this a to b sometimes it is also shown like this it is also a multi step uh, arrows these arrows shows that these reactants are converted to these products by a different steps by adopting multi step path it does not mean that the, uh, these these reactants are converted to this product in a three steps instead these reactions the these steps can be more or less than three then here is the last one which is broken arrow it is shown by two types like this one by placing two lines or by placing cross on this arrow it shows that we have tried this reaction but it didn't work or it shows an unsuccessful reaction that's all about arrows in chemistry i hope that you have learned something new and thank you